Hey everybody, Techie101 here. Now, I'm going to be closing out the Admiral series of discussions in this video. I actually wasn't even planning on doing this one, but there are two specific characters that I feel need to be mentioned as we are talking about the highest ranking Marines in the, uh, the story of One Piece. And of course, I am referring to Monkey D. Garp and Sengoku. Se do, oh, do we ever get a last name for Sengoku? Nope, I think it's just Sengoku. Yeah, it's just Sengoku. Okay, um, now these two characters don't really appear appear all that much in the story. Uh, they have, uh, they're, they're very relevant to the story. Garp is Luffy's paternal gra uh, grandfather, and Sengoku was the former fleet admiral in command of all the admirals and vice admirals underneath him, so they are very relevant to the story, but they don't really appear enough for to warrant their own separate video, like uh, just a Sengoku-centered video or a Garp-centered video. I think I can knock them both out in the same one. Um, but it's important to mention here that these characters... They're part of the old guard. They're part of the uh, previous generation. The time when they were on the, the seas, you know, being marines and busting pirates, you know, that era has come and gone, and this is not their story. This is the story about Luffy's generation, about the generation of the rookies, and by extension with that, we also have, like, the Yonko and and the uh, the, the current admirals here. But um, I don't think we're going to be getting, like, oh, okay, now we're going to have a scene where Garp is just gonna go freaking badass throughout an entire arc. We're probably gonna get to see a pretty cool fight scene with them at some point in the story, uh, but we might not. And if we don't, I don't think that's a big deal. Um, I know we always like to look at these really badass older characters and we like to think, oh man, we're definitely gonna, I, ho I can't wait to see what they're gonna be capable of. Um, but we might not. If we never get to see a badass fight with like Sengoku going all crazy Buddha on somebody, you know, just d d don't feel bad. I just don't think that that's, uh, you know, that's really the point of the story. I think they're just trying to focus on the younger generations here. But anyway, let's start with Garp. Um, now, Garp is interesting because he actually appeared uh, in an early draft of One Piece in Romance Dawn version 2, which is sort of, like, relevant to the story, but it, it's it's kind of like a parallel universe where, like, little things are different. Um, that was the first scene where we saw Luffy having a grandfather, although he didn't look exactly like Garp does now. He was a little bit more pudgy, uh, but he still had the same basic layout of, like, the goatee and the scar along his, uh, I guess it would be his left eye here. That's another thing too all members of the the monkey family have a have like a mark on the left side of their face you know uh, luffy has the scar that he inflicted on himself garp has the crescent shaped scar on his eye and then dragon has the tattoo uh he's also dragon's father uh so it's not like the deal with ace how you know ace was uh, like luffy's adopted brother or something like that no it is a blood relation you know garp you know, uh, his his son is Dragon, and then Dragon's son is Luffy, and then that brings us to where we are here. Uh, but yeah, he first appeared in Romance Dawn version 2, and his introduction in the actual One Piece story is a little bit eh. Um, he first appears rather early on during the Diary of Kobe Meppo, okay? So remember, or remember our little uh, pink-haired, pudgy little kid named Kobe? You know, the f guy that first appeared in the Romance Dawn and, you know, we all thought was maybe going to be Luffy's sidekick on his journey, but then he leaves to join the Marines. We don't get to see him for hundreds of fucking chapters. Uh, and you kind of forgot about him occasionally. Um, Kobe and Hell Meppo, after the whole deal on Shelltown with uh, Morgan, after Morgan was, you know, defeated by uh, Zoro, and... Um, brought to justice, the person that went to Shelltown to kind of court-martial and arrest Morgan uh, was Garp. And at the time when he showed up, he was wearing a, a dog mask, and that's kind of his trademark. He also has a dog on the mast of his ship. Uh, and so he was introduced there, but that was in a cover story. I believe there was a few episodes, like filler in the anime when they were in the Grand Line. I think there was some there, like in between, like, it was like in between Whiskey Peak and Little Garden, or in between Little Garden and Drum Island. There was like a, a two filler episodes where it covered the cover page. By the way, minor side note and tangent, the anime needs to do that of a fuck a lot more. The anime, you know, I will be fine with filler arcs if you take it from the source material. Go to the different cover stories throughout the One Piece manga and adapt that into a filler arc. You, sh you should be able to get at least uh, two, three, four really good filler episodes per cover page. And so that way it'll maybe give you more time to work on the animation and stuff to come because I know the animation schedule is fucking hell. So I, I would be fine with that. Wouldn't you be fine with that to get to see Eneru's great space operation animated or the fucking CP9 independent report? That would be awesome. 
do it. Even if it's only one or two episodes, I'd be fine with it. But anyway, minor side note, that's when Garp first showed up. But we had no idea the relation to Luffy uh, or even what he really looks like or what his relevance was. We just thought, oh, it's a high-ranking Marine guy that has a dog mask. Um, and I think part of the reason Oda did that was to obscure his face so that we wouldn't recognize him from Romance Dawn version 2, even though that was sort of just like a rough draft for what would eventually become One Piece. Um, he eventually shows up in the actual story post Eni's lobby. Uh, this is when he introduces himself to the Straw Hat Pirates, and this is when we learn that he is uh, Luffy's grandfather, as well as this is also the point where we learn that Luffy's father is Monkey D. Dragon, the revolutionary. A lot of fucking shit dropped in this post Eni's lobby arc here, uh, when the crew goes back to Water 7 and they're resting up in Galila. Um... Garp is informed that that's where Luffy is because Luffy kind of pissed the government off a little bit when he did, oh, I don't know, pretty much uh, burned down the world government flag on Eni's lobby, beat up one of their cypher pole agents, uh, top assassin, uh, Spondom got the shit beat out of him. And, oh, yeah, and it's indirectly because of him they probably pinned it on them that that's the reason that the Buster Call had to incinerate their entire judiciary island. So the government was a little bit mighty pissed at Luffy here. Uh, Garp finds out he's in Water 7. He goes there with Kobe and Helmeppo, as well as the rest of his crew. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, Bar Garp has a member of his crew. It's kind of like his right-hand man. His name's Bogart, and I don't have a picture of him ready to queue up, but he looks just like uh, Humphrey Bogart from Casablanca, and he has, like, the, the hat and the suit and everything and a sword, and we don't really know what his whole deal is, but he looks really cool, so I hope we get, you know, some more stuff on him later on. He was the one that actually trained Kobe and Helmeppo in, like, the initial stages here during, uh, oh, and when uh, they went to Marine headquarters with uh, Garp. Um, but, yeah, Garp shows up and beats the shit out of Luffy here. <laughs> Uh, his his uh, his epitaph in the Marines, by the way, is Garp the Fist or Garp the Hero. We don't exactly know why he's referred to as the Hero. I mean, he's been in the Marines for pretty much his entire life since he was probably Luffy's age, uh, which is one of the reasons why Garp wanted Luffy to become a Marine later on. Um, but it's also probably because he had to deal with Roger a lot. Uh, Garp and Sengoku are the two members, like I said, of the older guard that have had to deal with a lot of the battles during Roger's generation. That's when their heyday sort of was, running around chasing the King of the Pirates. Uh, a well, as well as that, uh, Garp also had a lot of uh, run-ins with other pirates, such as Shaki, although we don't really know how that went down yet, um, as well as Don Chinjao. And uh, the epic scene here where uh, he punches Chinjao's fucking... Uh, he, he had the uh, the spearhead, you know, his head that he could armor up with hockey and he could, like, split an entire cotton in half. And then Garp just, fuck you! And just, bam, just crushed his entire head. Uh, now... You know what? We'll get into the hockey discussion later, okay? But for right now, I'm just going through, you know, Garp's history and everything as a Marine hero, okay? So we don't... That's probably one of those reasons or all of those reasons why he's considered a Marine hero. And Garp the Fist, because he probably has one of the strongest uh, armament hockey in the entire story, like, period. Um... After he arrives at Galley La, Luffy is just to the rest of his crew. He's like, don't, don't try to fight him. You will die. Don't bother. And then this is where we find out the fucked up history of Luffy's family. Okay, so Garp, you know, he was basically Luffy's father figure growing up in his, when, when Luffy was really young. Okay, before he even met Shanks, before he got, you know, got sent to Don Don, before he met Ace, when Luffy was just growing up in Fuchsia Village, he was probably raised a lot by Makino and the mayor and everything. Everybody, but Garp would appear every now and then. Remember, Garp's a vice admiral, so he has a lot of other shit he needs to do. But he would appear every now and then to uh, bond with Luffy, which uh, includes throwing him into a jungle, uh, throwing him down a trench, tying a bunch of balloons to him, and sending him up to the fucking stratosphere, all in the sake of making him strong so he could become a Marine someday. That was Garp's dream, to get Luffy and Ace to join the Marines and follow in his footsteps. Of course, Shanks shows up at Fuchsia one time when Garp wasn't there, and then Luffy learned all about the pirate life, and that's what he wanted to do with his life. It's very possible, in fact likely, that if Shanks had never shown up there, Luffy would have become a Marine. Which was uh, interesting. I think there should be a, a One Piece parallel story with that. Like, what would happen if Luffy became a Marine? That'd be pretty cool. Even in a fan fiction element, it would be very entertaining. The same events just with Luffy as a Marine, you know? Um, you know, he's still wicked strong and everything like that. Um... But yeah, so after a few years of that, of his training, and after Luffy met uh, Shanks, and he started on this pirate shit, uh, Garp, I guess, decided he needed a little bit more 
tough love. So what he did was he took him over to uh, Don Don, Curly Don Don, who was a mountain bandit at the time. And by the way, Garp, he's a Marine, Vice Admiral, really high ranked, but he's he's pretty loosey goosey when it comes to that kind of shit sometimes. He 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 um he still follows the rules, sort of similar to Aokiji there. In fact, uh, Garp actually did something to save Aokiji's life in the past, so that's why Aokiji said he was kind of indebted to Garp. Um, but yeah, he, he, you know, when he, during the war and everything like that, he, you know, was there and he stood up for, you know, he even confronted his own grandson there, uh, although he didn't really fight back. Um, that was the point where he was kind of like, you know, tough on what he should do uh but he fought against roger for all those years so he's obviously takes his, his position as the marine very seriously but he, he's kind of loose with it with like hey don don take care of these kids and i won't turn you in even though you go around pillaging villages all the time you know so he, he's under the impression that just because you're a mountain bandit or just because you're a pirate it doesn't mean that you're a bad person uh and he's one of the few high-ranking marines that actually understand that fucking distinction uh especially playing off of akininu so yeah uh but anyway gives uh, you know uh ace and luffy over to don don and then don don kind of takes care of them for most of their childhood uh garp shows up a few times to just say hi and you know beat the shit out of them and train them and everything like that um but yeah that's pretty much it we don't really get much get much more of garp uh in that sense after post any's lobby he shows up he chases off the thousand sunny with his uh his trademark giant ass iron ball which is like the size of his fucking ship don't even tell me how that shit works how you fit a giant huge ball but yeah garp is wicked strong he's probably one of the most physically strong characters in the entire story so you know he like chucks this giant ball at the thousand sunny they use kuda burst and get the fuck out of there um so it's it's more of just like he's testing his grandson in fact a lot of times when luffy does outrage his shit. Garp is just kind of laughing his ass off when he learns about L Luffy's infiltrated impel down Garp. What the fuck is he doing? And Garp's just like, ha ha Luffy, that's great. Want a rice cracker Sengoku? You know, and Sengoku's freaking out and that's an interesting, you know, parallel they have together. They have this this little, um, this, this little fucking, um, uh, bulk and skull routine going on sometimes. It's kind of funny. But yeah, he shows up at Marine Ford, of course. Um, this is a moment where he doesn't really do a lot of fighting himself because he's because he's about to witness Ace die. And Ace is just, he's not his paternal grandson, but he's like his adoptive grandson. Roger himself actually asked Garp to raise his kid, or at least make sure that his kid doesn't die. Um, you know, Roger was in Impel Down waiting to be executed, I guess, or he was in prison somewhere. And uh, Garp was talking to him, and, and, and even though... You know, there one's a pirate, one of the greatest pirates ever, the greatest pirate ever, and then Garp is this marine hero who chased him down a shit ton of times. Um, oh shit, I just realized something. Could it have been maybe because because Roger turned himself into the Marines, but the Marines spun it like you know they caught him, you know, to bolster their their ranks. So like, yeah, we caught the fucking pirate king, go Marines. They didn't actually do that. Roger turned himself in, but perhaps the story that they spun was that Garp. Garp, this this great marine who has been chasing Roger for years, he's the one that caught him. And then maybe that's how Garp got the epitaph of, you know, the marine's great hero or something like that. And that's why he's so revered by everybody in the lower ranks. Uh, and he was even offered the admiral position, by the way, but Garp turned it down because he's just like, I don't need the admiral position. That would actually restrict me a little bit. So that's why he kept his vice admiral status. That might be, that actually makes a lot of sense. And that would also make a lot of sense why Garp doesn't really give a shit about, like, you know, he's like, oh, I'm not, he doesn't go around being like, I'm the Marine's great hero. You know, he doesn't give a shit about that. That might actually be the way they spun it. That actually makes a lot of sense. But anyway, while Roger was waiting in prison, Garp said to him, hey, I mean, uh, Roger said to Garp, he's like, I have a kid. You know, I, I bang this chick in the South Blue, and she's going to give birth to this kid pretty soon. They're the Marines are going to find them, and they're going to kill them. And it, it, I don't want that kid to be punished for the sins of his pirate father. So, Garp, you and I have been chasing around each other. You guys, you, you know me pretty well. All those times you tried to kill me. You'll help that kid out, won't you? And Garp's like, what the fuck are you talking about? But Garp was a stand-up guy. Like I said, he didn't have the kind of morality that Akinu had. He didn't view, oh, Roger, you're the king of the pirates, therefore fuck you and your kid. Uh, no, he's like, all right, all right, you're right. The kid doesn't deserve to fucking die because you, he's just an innocent baby. He doesn't deserve to die because of you. So um, Garp 
helped Ace, you know, get away from, you know, the Marines, uh, kind of, uh, radar there, and then brought Ace to Don Don as well to raise. Um, it was also really complicated there because Ace hated his father a lot. He hated Roger, and Garp was trying to maybe see, make him see that, you know, your dad, you shouldn't hate your dad, okay? Because he wasn't really a bad guy. He was a pirate. They're not the same. And, and and Ace just would not. Ace always hated Roger. To the day he died, he did not like Roger. And he viewed Whitebeard as his actual father. But yeah, there was that. Um, during Marine Ford, of course, Luffy is trying to rescue Ace. Uh, and Garp has to stand in the way there. Uh, you have the scene where Inazuma creates the stone stairwell where Luffy could just... Okay, all you have to do, Luffy, is just climb up this stairwell, and then you'll be right at Luffy uh, at Ace's execution platform. So Luffy begins to run up, and then Garp just crashes down right in front of him, and then Luffy just closes his eyes, goes gear second, and just BAM! Punches his grandfather right in the face without really even a word. Um... And, well, there was words. Garp was just like, I'm not gonna move, Luffy! Now, Garp could have kicked the shit out of Luffy eight ways to Sunday if he wanted to. Um, but he didn't. I think just because, um, you know, he was he was viewed as like, I'm a Marine, I have to stand against him because this is the pirate monkey D. Luffy trying to rescue Ace. We cannot have that. I have to stand against him. I have to stand in front of him. But at the last minute, Garp just could not bring himself to punch his grandson. So he didn't activate hockey. He didn't do anything. He just kind of stood still and then just took the hit. Obviously did not really hurt him at all. I think he had like a bloody lip afterwards or something, but it's nothing to Garp. Uh, but very, very emotional scene. That in the scene where Luffy had to gum gum no bullet Kobe. Very emotional scenes in Marineford where it really just... It tightens Luffy's resolve. Like, no matter who it is, I will save Ace. No matter who I have to punch, no matter who I have to face, my friends, my family, I will save Ace. I would talk about Garp's relationship with Dragon, but we don't really have all that much of that to go on. Uh, mentioned Gar I mentioned Dragon to Luffy uh, at Water 7. That's how Luffy found out that Dragon was his father. Um, apparently Smoker, I guess, told Garp about the situation at Logtown when Dragon showed up to rescue Luffy, and so that's how Garp knew about it, you know, he's like, oh, you already met your father in Logtown, Luffy, um, and yeah, uh, there's, uh, I guess I'll talk about the hockey thing now, he doesn't have a devil fruit, I mean, I, it, he just doesn't, I think we would have learned about that by now, uh, we haven't seen any disproof, like, we haven't seen him swimming or anything, but I'm pretty sure Garp does not have a fucking, uh, devil fruit, what he does have is probably the strongest armament hockey in the story, uh, Garp is well known, of course, as Garp the Fist, and, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't do that shit where he arms up his entire body with armament hockey, so he's not known, like, super badass, like, you know, like, like, just like, oh, I'm gonna have an entire army, uh, you know, armor of, uh, that, like, which is funny, because every time a character does that, like, Virgo and Pika, they always get fucking one-shotted like immediately after but no he just usually charges up hockey in his one fist and then um that is enough to punch out you know really strong fucking characters like one shot with chin Zhao. chin Zhao was also an expert at using armament hockey now you also might be saying well matt uh luffy did that too to chin Zhao. luffy was able to pierce through chin Zhao's hockey as well well, he was, but also think about it this way. Chin Zhao obviously was in his prime when he fought Garp, but also the thing was there, he had that spike on his head that he charged up with hockey, which was like this incredibly powerful spear. Garp punched that. He like punched the spearhead down and like and crushed his head. When Luffy fought Chin Zhao, Chin Zhao already had his, 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 his head was like blunt, you know, and then Luffy had to still go fucking gear third, armament hockey, Thor fucking elephant gun, you know, charging up with, like, static electricity, or however the hell that worked, and then punched him, and that didn't, like, punch the spear down, it, like, straddled his head and popped it back up. I'm just gonna say, it's, it, it's more impressive for Garp, who just did it with one fist, with no devil fruit powers, no big theatricality, and then just punched a spear right down to the nub. Um... I think that would have been a little bit more impressive. He probably has the strongest arm in hockey in the story. I don't think anyone... Well, I mean, I think you might say, like, oh, well, maybe Akainu or maybe some, like, Shanks or a Yonko or Kaido might have the strongest. But uh, I think Garp is certainly a contender. I mean, come on here. 
Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all we get there. After the Marine Ford War, he resigns from the Marines, sort of, kind of. He's still a vice admiral in name and position, but he's basically just an, a, an instructor now, teaching the younger generations, basically inspiring the younger generations to join the Marines. You gotta have your Uncle Sam kind of character there to to rally the, the forces, and that's basically what Garp is. He's like the symbol of the Marines. You know, he's, he's an old man who's wicked fucking strong, who fought against the Pirate King, and uh, is, is still a high-ranking member of the Marines, so that is, uh, that's Garp, that's Garp to a T. <sighs> now on to Sengoku. Now, Sengoku and Garp have a relationship together, so I already said that Garp at one point, he was, he was gonna be a, uh, an admiral around, uh, his, his youth, but he just chose to stay as a vice admiral. Uh, at this point, Sengoku was also, an, he was an admiral. Uh, but like I said, their power levels were pretty much equivalent, you know, rank isn't everything, they were both wicked strong, so they basically worked uh, together a lot uh, back in the day, and Sengoku eventually became the fleet admiral of the entire marines. Now, Sengoku is not as loose with the law as Garp is. Um, he's actually probably closer to Akinu a few times when he, when he's, uh, you know, reporting from the world government, you know, basically doing whatever they tell him to do. Um, I believe the one time that he was really against it or the, like, he's starting to see, you know, how corrupted the world government is. I'm sure he's had to deal with that a lot of times in his life, but he just had to kind of bite his tongue. After Marine Ford, when Impel Down was, uh, breached, of course, and you had, you had Blackbeard take all of the level six, well, not all, but a few of the level six prisoners, like, you know, San Juan Wolf and Katarina and Davon. You had Blackbeard take those guys out, but you also had a bunch of the other level six prisoners that managed to escape as well. And then Sengoku's like, oh, good lord. Okay, okay. Put out Wani, uh, bounty posters. We gotta get this fucking locked down. And uh, they're like, no, we can't do that because the Gorusei said we're, 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 we're keeping a lid on this. We can't, we can't let the world know that we let all these level six prisoners escape. And then the Marines, and then and Sengoku was pissed. Sengoku was like, I don't give a damn! You know, uh, so it's in that situation he seemed to be going against the Gorusei a little bit, like, fuck the Gorusei, I don't care, man, I have a job to do. Uh, it's an, it's an odd position, that of Fleet Admiral, because you're given the, like, on the surface, it's like, you're the strongest, like, you have the most authority, you can control all the Marines in the entire world, but at the same time, you're still fucking subservient to five fucking old farts sitting in a room together, and whatever they say still goes. Um, Sengoku also still has one more uh, authority figure of Kong. I'll just mention him very briefly. Kong was the fleet admiral back during uh, the Ed War incident, like 20 years ago when Sengoku was still an admiral. And now uh, Kong is now the um, world government commander-in-chief. And there was actually like a hierarchy laid out on how this all works. But it's like Sengoku is the one in control of the marine forces. Kong is now the one, the world com the world government commander in chief. He's the one that controls the Marines, so he's above Sengoku, but he also controls like the cipher pole agents and and everything like that. Um, and then above Kong, you have the Gorusei, who are the true heads of the world government uh, that that actually call all the shots ultimately. So yeah, so Sengoku, you know, he has power, but he still has superior uh, superiors. And if they say we're not doing anything, it's a very in it's very stressful. For a fleet admiral at the time, and even even Akainu is starting to see through the veil there too. Even Akainu is starting to get pissed at the Gorosei a little bit. So, uh, Sengoku also does not appear in the story all that much. He first appears after Alabasta uh, at the meeting with the warlords to discuss Luffy defeating Crocodile and everybody like that. Um, he appears a few more times, usually comedy relief with Garp, uh, cause they're, like I said, it's always usually funny with them, cause, you know, Garp is kind of this, you know, I'm, I'm the vice admiral, I'm the, you know, I'm, I'm this chill guy, I basically do what I want to do, and, uh, then you have Sengoku, whose position is really serious, he's the fleet admiral, and he's the one that has to kind of answer for all this shit every time Luffy decides to blow up a fucking, uh, government flag, or government island, or defeat a fucking warlord, Sengoku has to hear about it, and then he's just like, Garp, come on, man, discipline your grandson, and Garp's like, oh, Luffy defeating Moria, that's crazy, I didn't like that Onion guy anyway, and, you know, so it's it's really funny when you get to see those guys interact, 
Um, there's a few more serious moments with them too, like when they confronted Shiki. That was that was pretty badass. Am I gonna mention Shiki? Ah, no, fuck Shiki. Uh, and so now it's time to discuss his uh, Devil Fruit ability. I guess. I mean, he's he appears at Marine Four really quick. He's the one that actually relays the information that hey, Ace is actually Roger's son, and uh, and also Luffy's gra uh, father is Dragon. Um, so he relays all this information, but for the most part, he's the commanding officer, so he's the one that just kind of stands up on the scaffolding, watching Ace, giving orders to all the Marines below, trying to root Whitebeard uh, in the battle. So he's the commanding officer, of course. Uh, but he does get into the action when Luffy finally arrives at the scaffold and tries to, you know, release uh, Ace's handcuffs. Sengoku's right there. Like, you're just like, Luffy just walks right by him, and he's like, he's like okay, Luffy probably didn't even know who he was. Um, and so his Devil Fruit ability is the Hito Hito no Mi. That's right, the Hito Hito no Mi, the same, uh, the human human fruit, the same that Chopper has, um, with a little bit of a twist. His is actually a, uh, a mythical zone, the same with, uh, Marco. Marco had the mythical zone fruit for the Phoenix, um... Sengoku has the mythical human human fruit. Well, okay, what what variation of human could be considered mythical? Well, I don't know. Maybe the fucking Buddha? Yes! He's the Buddha! He turns into a giant golden statue with an afro. I mean, come on, man. Um <laughs> We don't even know the whole story about how that works, like what he really does with it. Uh, but remember, I should also bring up, remember back when, okay, before we knew about that, before we knew that Sengoku, and by the way, Sengoku's epitaph was the Buddha, but we didn't think it would be taken literally. When Chopper's human-human uh, fruit was revealed, I think somebody sent an SBS question in like, hey, uh, Oda, what would happen if a human would have eaten the human-human fruit? And Oda just replied with like, oh, well, they wouldn't change at all, but they would just become enlightened. And it's funny because Sengoku is a human that ate the human human fruit, albeit a different, albeit a different model, but he did become the Buddha who is, you know, it's the Buddha, it's enlightenment, you know, so that's cool. Um, in terms of what it actually does, uh, it makes Sengoku grow to huge size, admit light from all around him whenever he goes into this form, um, so obviously there's a, you know, an increase in strength and power when you're this giant fucking golden statue here, um, and also you can, uh, he can input, uh, output, uh, shock waves. Uh, we saw that when he fought against, uh, Blackbeard, uh, Garp and Sengoku kind of tag team Blackbeard a little bit there, and Sengoku can kind of just like extend out his palm and just boom and like these giant shock waves will just emit and uh really fucked up whitebeard a little i mean i fucked up blackbeard there fucked up blackbeard who fucked up whitebeard yeah. So after the war, though, uh, similar to Garp, uh, Sengoku decided to step down from the fleet admiral position, and he is now a general inspector. So he's still in the Marines. Uh, his hair turned white just from the two-year time skip, I guess, just from stress and all that shit that happened in Marine Ford. Maybe he was dying it. I don't know. Uh, and so he's much more laid back now. We only saw him in Film Z and in the recent uh, story arc, Dress Rosa. He appears at the end of Dress Rosa uh, to kind of mop up the whole shit with uh, Doflamingo. He was part of the escort convoy along with Fujitora and Suru, uh, bringing uh, Doflamingo to Impel down there. And he also confronted Jack, who Jack, of course, as we've already established, is kind of a dipshit. Um, but yeah, it's uh, much more laid back now and uh, also had a confrontation with Law during Dress Rose, and I guess that's the last thing I'll touch upon. Um, so Sengoku... I'm not going to go super into the backstory on Doflamingo. You'd have to look that up for my Doflamingo video I did. But Doflamingo had a brother, Roshinate. And Roshinate was separated from Doflamingo when they were kids. And he was found by Sengoku while he was still an admiral. And so uh, Sengoku basically became the paternal, not paternal, uh, adoptive father of Roshinate. And raised him as a marine. So he eventually grew up to be, I think, uh, I think Roshinate was a lieutenant or something, a lieutenant cap, like a, you know, lieutenant, something, it was a decent, like, high-ranked, and so, uh, that was part of their plan, though, that, uh, Sengoku was, like, relaying with Roshinate, Roshinate was undercover as Corazon to infiltrate the Doflamingo pirates, eventually Roshinate gets killed by Doflamingo, and, uh, Sengoku is kind of left to grieve about that, so, at the end of Dressrosa Law, once again, Law is used to be a warlord, but at this point he was kind of defected from that because he had an ally with Luffy. Law meets with Sengoku, and even though Sengoku is he's the former fleet admiral, he's still in the Marine, uh, and he could bring 
law in for being a traitorous warlord and a pirate, a very strong pirate, um, Sengoku doesn't do that. He listens to law, probably because of sentimentality for Roshinate and everything, because uh, Roshinate was basically law's older brother figure. Uh, so they have a conversation about that, and so they, you know, talk about Roshinate and the shit that happened there, and basically Sengoku says, you know, like, you know, I don't think Roshinante would want you to grieve him. I think you would just want him to carry on his like his his will and stuff. And you defeated Doflamingo. You and Straw had defeated Doflamingo, so I think his spirit can rest easy now. Um, he, oh, he also has a gorilla and a goat. Um, I don't know if that's just his thing because he's a Buddha and the Buddha was like in tune with all of nature and shit. So, you know, Sengoku has a little pet goat and he also has a gorilla that just chills out with him. Sengoku and Harambe. There needs to be a show about that. You know, Sengoku and Arambe, you know, they drive around in a go-kart and have wacky adventures. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Um, but, yeah, that's that's the deal with him right now. And, you know, he did the convoy for Doflamingo and defeated Jack, and that's that's the last time we saw him there. Um, but, yeah, that that's the that's uh, Sengoku and Garp, and that's uh, their past. I mean, like, I, I think we're going to get to see a few more flashbacks with them, maybe at some point. I think later on in the story, we're actually going to get, like, a Roger flashback. We're going to get a flashback arc where we see, like, we're actually Roger. We take, like, like like how we did with Nolan in, in Skypea, how Nolan was, like, the main character of his flashback arc. We're going to get the same thing with Roger. And we might get to see a little bit more fights with, uh, you know, uh, Sengoku and Garp. Uh, the only thing that concerns me a little bit is because they are part of the older generation. You all know how how old people are in manga, right? You understand how this usually works. Um, you know, okay, like, you have Jiraiya in Naruto. Jiraiya shows up, really badass, older character, teaches Luffy, I mean, teaches, yeah, Jiraiya teaches Luffy. Jiraiya teaches Naruto all this other, all this ninjutsu shit, and he's really badass, and then he dies. Um, so, yeah. I'm hoping that doesn't happen with Garp. I'm hoping it's not at some point in the story Garp ends up dying. Although he is a D. Um, and the Ds don't have a great track record for uh, survival. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we we don't know much more about Garp's life. I'm trying to think. We don't know who he was, who he was married to or anybody like that. Um, and I think that's going to be relevant for at least Luffy's lineage. I think we're going to find out who Luffy's mom was at some point. I think that is going to be rather relevant. I think Oda... Didn't Oda confirm that Luffy's mom was a revolutionary like Dragon? I think he did. Uh, but I think it's also going to be relevant, you know, there. Maybe maybe Garp's mother... Garp's uh, wife just mentioned as, like, a thing, you know, passing thing. Like, how Ace's mom was Porcus D. Rogue. We didn't really get a lot of much stuff with Rogue, but it was interesting that sh that's her name and how she cared for her son, and she was also a carrier of the Will of D as well. So, it's interesting, yeah. Uh, and I also, did, isn't Garp the only one of the Marines that has the Will of D aside from, well, Saul had it, but Saul died. I think he's the only one currently in the Marines that carries the Will of D with him. Yeah. So, it, it might be interesting to know, because the Will of D, you know, it was stated by Corazon, like, they're the enemies of God, which, of course, refer to the enemies of the world nobles, the enemies of the Gorusei, and Garp is a Marine, uh, which is why maybe so many carriers the D family line uh, want to go against the government, you know, Roger went against the government, Teach, Luffy, Ace, you know, and Garp's, like, the only one, he's a D, but he's still holding still to the cause of the Marines, so like to know a little bit about that. That seems like an interesting little spin there. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I'm really pumped for the next time. I'm really pumped because we're going to be getting into the discussions on the Straw Hats. Oh, that's right. We're going to be getting straight into that. It's going to be pretty fucking cool. We're going to start with the best Straw Hat, let's be honest here. The most powerful. Uh, next episode, Straw Hat Discussions, God Usopp. Catch you back here next time, guys. Signing out.